Hi and welcome to the Sacred You podcast where we create sacred community together. My name is Rachel Goodwin and I'm a channel, healer, author and spiritual teacher who loves to empower you on your spiritual path. If you're ready to up level, come over to my website rachelgoodwin.dk and come and browse through all of my offerings with Sarah the Magdalene's daughter and the lineage of the Blue Rose. Today's episode is with Diana Cooper. I've been following Diana's work for over 20 years and it was really exciting for me to get this opportunity to interview her. Diana's been working with the angelic realm since her guardian angel appeared to her. Her mission is to connect people to angels, dragons, unicorns and Atlantis for personal and planetary ascension. She's written over 30 books that are translated into 28 languages and produced many, many card decks. Diana is a lovely teacher and in my experience I found that the things that she teaches like with the unicorns and the dragons, she opens up a doorway so that it's really just so easy for the rest of us to be able to step through that doorway and access these incredible things that she's teaching. She, she really has a gift for making these things easy and we have this incredible opportunity coming up now in October. So I won't say any more. I'll just let you listen to the interview. Yeah, enjoy. Lots of blessings, everyone. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Sacred You. And today I have a very, very special guest with us, Diana Cooper. Welcome, Diana. Hello. Lovely to talk to you. It's really nice to meet you. I live in Denmark now, as you know, but before that, I lived in Surrey for oh, some you? years. Yeah. yeah, I do. Yes, I've lived there, yes. I know, I know, because I remember um, being with a group of priestesses. I trained in Surrey as a priestess of the goddess, and we were talking about your work, and that must have been 2000 and maybe oh, 2000, I... maybe 2002. <laughs> I know, it was like... No, no. I left Surrey before 2000s, so it was a long time ago. Ah, okay. But I I remember talking about your work and then I thought today, that was quite a long time ago. So it's been a, it's been a, it's been a while. It doesn't seem so long ago when I think about it though, to be honest. Well, that's the higher frequency you are, the faster time flies. Yes, yes. And we're here today to talk about an event that you are doing on the 22nd of October, later on this month. Well, my new book, The Golden Future, has just come out. And that is all about the incredible time we're moving into, how amazing it's going to be. It describes it. It tells us about the lead up through this current period of instability that we're going through before we get into the new energy. And then there's a section about how you raise the frequency in your entire body all you have to do is read it and the angels work with you to create it and then some higher frequency exercises but then the angels came to me and asked me to do this event and it was raise the frequency of the world so the main event is going to be live in portugal where archangel Raphael has his retreat And he, of course, is a great angel of healing and abundance, which is so needed right now on the planet. But it's being live streamed around the world. And Archangel Metatron said that it was going to be the most important event since the cosmic moment in 2012. I mean, quite amazing. (laughs) Through the day, we are first going to raise the frequency of the third eye. And there is a purpose in this because you're... Afghanistan is the third eye chakra of the planet. And of course, that's it's destined to be the last place on earth to be at peace. And it's a reflection of the third eye chakras of humanity. So raising the frequency of as many people as possible on that day will have an impact on Afghanistan and hopefully start to create peace there. The moment we have peace and cooperation on the planet, then the crystal skull of Atlantis, the amethyst skull that contains 
all the wisdom of Atlantis releases its light. That brings all the crystals on the planet into line and they start raising their light, radiating that out. And then a portal in China, which carries pure white source love, starts to radiate its energy. And that's going to have a bigger impact than we have any concept of. And that is going to touch the higher hearts of humanity and start to bring love energy throughout the world. So we're becoming more and more into peace. Then Adrian Lee is doing a massive Akashic record clearing. So it's preparing everybody to do the incredible monadic merge meditation in the afternoon. Now, your monad, as you know, is way beyond your higher self. It's your beyond your stellar gateway. It's connected to your stellar gateway. It's your original divine blueprint, who you truly are. It's 12th dimensional. And so we are, for the first time, all collectively together, raising our frequency to merge with our monad. Now, there is a process that I was given to do, and I do this meditation every single day. Even if I have to get up at four o'clock in the morning, I, that meditation is done. And the aim is to take us through the stages. And it's changed constantly as, as time has gone on. And that's been because the frequency has risen all around us. You're very well aware, I'm sure, of how the frequency on the planet has changed. And it's it's changing very, very rapidly. So we start with five masters, each of whom gives us specific energies to help us. Then we create an archangel wall where 12 archangels are coming in and each one is awakening upper fifth dimensional qualities within us. So all the qualities that we need for our monadic merge are being awakened at a high frequency energy within us so that we will be ready. Well, actually it's preparing us then to connect with the planetary energies. Every planet contains specific energies. And we are now able to access them, unlock those energies and release them to bring them down for ourselves and for humanity and the planet. The key to unlocking them is love. And we are going up with love to each of those planets and bringing, well, Source particularly said, don't use bringing in, releasing those frequencies so that we can act, bring them into our physical bodies and they will change our lives. You can literally feel them coming down into you at a cellular level. While we are doing that, we are going up collectively to access some 11th dimensional energies from the cosmos. Now, in 2,000 years ago, Jesus came in to bring down and to activate and to anchor the Christ light. Now, the energy on the planet has changed. Now, we are asked collectively to go up and access and unlock these specific energies. And then they are going to be anchored into the planet by three people who can carry that energy. And so that's awesome. The first one is Helios, the great central sun. That's where all the light codes for this universe are created. And the golden orange energy of all you can be in this lifetime will be released and brought down and anchored by Tim Wilde into Earth. And that means that people will be able to access their higher potential for this lifetime. And we're going to Andromeda, where the 11th dimensional higher love energy for this universe is held. 
And so that in, in a violet pink light contains the codes of love, wisdom and peace in perfect balance. So we're reaching out to bring it down together, unlock it, and Adrian Lee is anchoring that into the earth, into the hollow, into the great pyramid of hollow earth. And then we're going to Lyra, which is the unicorn kingdom where the pure white unicorn energy is held beyond the stargate of Lyra. And that pure white energy contains all the qualities that we need for the golden future. And so Myrkafkios is anchoring that energy into the Great Pyramid, and we are establishing it there so that humanity can draw on these energies to help us move forward. Having done that, we are bringing all the energy down through each one of us, channeling it into the earth, and as I'm sure you know, the energy of earth is wisdom and it holds that golden light. As we all collectively bring in the light from the cosmos, this will change it to golden white, which is a much higher frequency. That energy spreads around the planet and then pulses golden white energy into the universe. And this allows earth to take its rightful place in the universe. So when we have done that, we can bring all that golden white energy through us. And at last we can rise up and merge with our monadic self and hold that energy for as long as we can. But then something awesome is happening. All our monads together are moving and merging as one. When that happens, the light created will illuminate the entire universe. Never, ever happened before. And for the first time ever in the entire history of the planet, humans will be able to touch a 12th dimensional frequency, which is beyond imagining. And so we then leave our monads and we travel to the Intergalactic Council. Now the Intergalactic Council, as you know, is the body of 12 mighty masters who take decisions for this universe. And so we go there and I love this, it's so typical. I was asked if I would record in advance for some people who were translating this into other languages so that they could understand it and make sure they got the pronunciations right. So it took quite a long time to do this because I didn't get it right the first time. The dogs barked, all sorts of things happened. And so I finally got it. Oh, I was so pleased with it. Saved it, went to bed and thought I'll send it in the morning. In the morning, no sign of it. I know, I know. I understand your face, Rachel. That was mine too. I said to my guide, I saved it, didn't I? He said, yes. So I said, you've taken it off. He said, yes. I said, <laughs> I said why? <laughs> he said, because... The frequency was so high, I took it to source for a final check. And there are certain words that are needing to be changed to fine tune it. I mean, anyway, I, it was things like, instead of I saying, bring down the energy from the planets, he was saying, no, you must unlock with love, then release those energies. And also, I had petitions for the Intergalactic Council, and he said, no, the most important one is for the planet Earth, is for clean air, clean water, clean pure soil to be returned to the planet. That is number one. And El Moira is going to take that petition for human, from humanity. 
And the second one is for leaders with integrity and vision and honour to step forward and courage to step forward to lead us forward. Now, I had quite separately been working with Serapis Bay and the pure white flame of Atlantis. And that is the most powerful energy to dissolve and transmute the third dimensional energies and all this stuck stuck stuff at the end of Atlantis and Lemuria that were left behind in the planet. And so I said to him, Serapis Bay, would you bring the pure white flame of Atlantis down over the entire planet on the 22nd of October? And he said, oh, he said, I can't agree to that. You would have to ask the Intergalactic Council because this will affect not just this planet, but the universe. So I went to the Intergalactic Council and asked them and they said, oh, we can't give permission without consultation. We'll have to talk to the councils of other planets because this will affect the universe. Come back tomorrow. So I went back the next day and they said, Yes, they would grant permission on the understanding that when everybody had merged with their monad, we would all collectively make the petition together from that energy. And so that is what is happening. And at the level of time where all is one, it's already happened, of course. And so the pure white flame of Atlantis will be brought down over the entire planet and it will shift the lower frequency by a minimum of 25%. And that number has gone right up. So stuck souls will see the light and a whole loads of those that are clogging up the astral planes will move away. The deep, dense energy in the seams of Earth, they will start to go in and clear that. Where there is very low vibration energy, it's going to be changed to gold and pink light. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, the entire planet will be illuminated from inside. And people who need that extra protection and clearance, they will receive within it their own pure white flame of Atlantis energy. So that's going to massively shift that energy too. And so the raise the frequency of the world event is kind of awesome. It's mind blowing to me. I keep thinking this is just mm -hmm. such an opportunity for as many people as possible to add their energy. And there's a portal of energy between the 22nd of October and the 11th of November. Now that portal is available for everybody, of course. And if anybody does that meditation during that period, it will add to the frequency of the planet. It will also add to their own ascension, of course. Mm -hmm. And if they do it after that period, it won't add to the planetary light, but it will help their own personal ascension. So it's amazing awesome times we're moving into wow <laughs> that's, that's just that's incredible I mean as you're speaking I can feel the energy is just washing mm -hmm. over me and just going higher and higher and I was wondering if you could say something about why now why this moment well as you know 2012 marked the end of a 260,000 year cosmic era. I mean, massive, beyond our comprehension, the era of Atlantis. And that ended in 2012. The new golden age starts in 2032, by which time our planet has to be fifth dimensional. So this is just beyond that halfway point where mm -hmm. we now have to stop moving towards the vision of the future. That's why I keep telling people, give no energy to the past, 
focus on the vision of the golden future that lies ahead of us, because that's the way we're going to all reach it together. So the time is now. Just about everybody you speak to says, oh, I can literally feel the energies shifting on the planet. I'm sure you've felt it as well. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And when I compare like the energy of the earth to like when I was a child to how it is now, it is like I'm living somewhere else, actually. Yes. And absolutely. but that's that's just from an energy perspective. When I kind of look out and I see the things that are going on in the world, it you know, I, I don't see it so visibly, but energetically, I read it completely. It's totally mm -hmm. happening. Well, the analogy I give is that of a kitchen. If so if you've ever had a new kitchen put into your house, this will really resonate. You know, you plan your kitchen and then they come in and they knock down all the old kitchen and you are left with rubble and chaos. Not only that, you are actually extending the walls and having a much bigger kitchen built. And at that point you think, oh my goodness, what have I let myself in for? but you hold the vision of this amazing new kitchen that's coming in. And when you do that, you, you get through it. And we are going through that point on earth where all the old third dimensional stuff has to be cleared out. We're now reaching the point where we're thinking about getting the cupboards in, the new started. <laughs> so that's why this is happening now. I love that metaphor. That really, that really, really works. Another thing I was wondering about is like the ancestral lines. Do you have a I sense of how this is going to work through the ancestral lines? Well, the reason there are so many people on the planet is because Source granted a dispensation to anybody who wanted to try and come back now and finish their karma before end times. And so the optimum number is 2,000, 2, million, 2 billion, sorry. There were 2 billion when I was born. And now there are 8 billion on the planet. That's because everybody wants to come and finish their karma. Now this is related to the ancestral lines. Until 2012, if you, your great grandfather left karma and it, it then goes on to the children and the children's children for up to seven generations or nieces and nephews and cousins, if there aren't any, but they had the free will to say, no way, that was his karma. I'm not taking it on. That ended in 2012. All the karma of the ancestral lines, the genetic karma, everything is being cleared now that's the end times and so that is the end so that in 2032 an entirely new blueprint and plan comes in for earth wow wow and so it all comes to an end but people that are incarnating now they've had a really tough time as i always say this is why allopathic medicine got a hold because with all this end time karma and all these coming in in forms of diseases and illnesses and challenges, people had to have something more to help them through it. But as we clear this out and we move into the new, we will reach the point where we take responsibility for our health again. We have clean air, clean water, clean soil. We'll be eating pure drinking pure and then we will be at a much higher frequency and all we'll need is rebalancing and archangel raphael is putting the fifth dimensional health blueprints back into people again so we can we can self-heal we can do it ourselves just needing balancing with herbs and natural forms again so this is the future we're looking forward to. Mm, yes, wonderful. How do how do people join the online event? What's the best way to do that? The easiest way is to just look at my website and under events, there is all the information. Well, the live event has been full for weeks, but you can get a, a link 
a live stream link and you can take part in either the whole day, which is a good idea. You do not have to do it all at the same time. You can take it over time. Or what we love to suggest is that you get a party of people together. You take one link and you just all do it together. It's part of the new energy is about community working together. Absolutely. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, I love that. So when people have done this and they've received these energies and help spread them out, is there going to be some sort of processing time, do you think, afterwards, processing those energies? Well, it's a very interesting question, that. And I've not asked much about this, but I understand we've got this portal of higher energy after which there is a period of shutdown on the planet. And people will not be able to go out and do things as they have done. There'll be a time when they've had to close down and rest. And that will enable them. Do not panic. Do not worry. Just stay quiet. And that will enable them to absorb and integrate those energies. Move to a higher frequency. Wow. That's really interesting. And very interesting for me personally, actually, because I've just decided to pause all of my new creative work from now until December. And I've never done that before. Mm. But so it the energy. Yeah, I was just getting all of these messages. And in the end, I just it was really hard, though, because I had things on the back burner that I really wanted to do. It was really hard to let go. But in the end, I just had to like go. I can't not listen to what I'm being told here. And I've done I've never done that before in 20 years of working. So perhaps I've just got in there a bit early. Yeah. Well, I said to my guide, should I do a workshop on the 11th of November? He said, absolutely not. You know, the, that's when the portal time ends and you have to go into a different space to absorb it all. Wow. What what in, incredible times. Mm. How do it you is. see you how do you see yourself in, in all of this? I mean, because your role is really pivotal. It's like it's almost like you're an emissary between Earth and the, <laughs> the cosmic councils. And I mean, I bet you really weren't expecting this, were you, when you first spoke to that angel all those years ago? No, I wasn't. I didn't know anything then. I was a complete ignoramus and a spiritual neophant. But uh, yeah, it all happened. And so to, if you're given a job, you have to do it. So it's just what whatever's next in front of you is just like, right, OK, so I have to do this now. <laughs> I think there'll be another job after this one. I don't suppose I'll get away with just resting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, it is it is it is quite overwhelming, actually, like mm. realising that this is this is this is the thing that's really happening I've yeah. I don't think I've sort of comprehended something or felt something of this magnitude before no. well the most important event since the cosmic moment is quite something yeah you know it is a planetary shift taking place and I'm sure all over the world there are other people doing things too but this is just my little part of it yeah I don't know. I, I don't know. I haven't. I mean, I have to admit, I have been very immersed in my own work. So maybe I've missed something, but I haven't heard something other than um, what 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 you're talking about. But I have felt all of the energies yeah. going on, you know, so it's, it's almost like a stealth rise, isn't it? It's uh, not been done with a great fanfare like the cosmic moment. It yeah. is quite quiet, but. If it raises the frequency of the planet and brings about peace and enables new things to come in, that's just awesome. Is there some reason why you chose Portugal to, to do the event in? <laughs> no, I think Portugal chose me. Um, a friend said, would I like to go on holiday for a week in April? 
And I said, yeah, that'd be great. And then that didn't work out. So we said October. <laughs> then it was, well, why don't we just do a little event? Because he wasn't, that's Adrian Lee, wasn't so well known. I said, it'll help to get you out there. I didn't know it was going to be massive like this. <laughs> and then somebody said, oh, look, I found you the perfect venue. And I was just thinking of, you know, 100 people. And he said, oh, no, 500 people. That's it. That's the one. My guide was saying, yeah, that's where you're to go. So that's what we did. And it's just escalated as more and more information comes in. And one of the interesting things is that when I go to the Intergalactic Council, when I started um, making the petitions and asking for more things, especially when I asked about Serapis Bay, then I turned around and there were literally millions of souls at the beginning around. And I thought, where are they from? What's this about? They're not just souls from Earth. They're souls from all around the universe supporting what we're doing. And now it's billions. It's like all these beings, not even just from this universe, other universes, they're all coming in to assist us, energetically holding the light. Beautiful. So we're not doing it alone. It's no. just massive. Beautiful. I know you've spoken a lot about working with the animal kingdoms and how special they are. Yes. Is there anything you could say about the animal kingdoms in relation to this event? Well, whenever we raise our frequency, the animals raise their frequency too. It doesn't happen in isolation. And in many, many cases, the animals are way ahead of us and they are helping us raise our frequency holding us steady, showing us different qualities that we need to absorb. It's very interesting. It's also a time when those animals that were designed for the third dimension will not be staying. You know, they've, they've done what they came to do and had their learnings and they will move to another planet where they are, they can continue. And and the other thing that people say is, well, what about um, global warming? I say, well, yes, absolutely. Since time began, Earth has had peaks of ice ages and other things. And this is, yes, we have not helped. Humanity's done unbelievably dreadful things. I'm not denying that. But I'm saying that this is not just at the door of humanity this is time for change and so uh, traditionally in the past there's been an ice age the purpose of an ice age is to purify the land beneath so that when the new people come along and it's purified they can live there at a higher frequency i can see you agreeing with this so the arctic has been prepared and that ice is now melting that will be pure land for higher frequency people to live on when it's ready now that ice is all melted and it's drowning a lot of places particularly the industrial cities that are on low coastal areas and so they've done their time that's complete and so people will be living in a different way New islands will come up that have been purified under the water where people will live. The future is going to be very different and not as we imagine it. It's so important to have hope. And the reason why I was nodding so enthusiastically is because where I live, it's a town called Roskila, about 20 kilometres outside Copenhagen, and it is full of springs. And the water oh. that comes up in this area of Shayland, it's melt water from the glaciers oh. from the last ice age, and it's oh. trapped underneath a layer uh -huh. of lime. And so we have this melt water glacier water coming up all over around oh. here. And they're such sacred springs, and that it's just so pure mm. that water. And I, I and it. I really love it. I really love it. Purifying your body. Yeah, won't it be great when everybody has pure water and we walk yeah. on pure land? And the land itself is fifth dimensional. I'll tell you another thing. In Atlantis, 
they created a golden era, a fifth dimensional golden age on third dimensional land. We are creating a fifth dimensional golden age on fifth dimensional land. And we will take the frequency much higher and have even more awesome things happening for us in the golden future. Yeah, mm. and 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 somehow it feels to me like it's going to be much more solid somehow. And I don't mean that in density. I just mean much more grounded in a way. Atlantis feels like it sort of came and went a little too easily somehow. This feels, mm. yeah, more more like it's got more integrity somehow. Yeah, well, that lasted for 1,500 years out of 260,000. And so now... We're moving into a totally new age. So you're absolutely right. We will then be moving higher and higher in frequency as the entire universe moves up in frequency. It is going to be awesome. Our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren are going to have a very different time from anything we can imagine. Well, I wish you many, many blessings on your time in Portugal. I know it will go wonderfully. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we well, finish not today? Really. Just tune in, do something on that day. If you can get the live stream, watch it, take part in it. But most of all, hold the vision of the golden future. And I'd, I'd really like to thank you for your role in this and thank all you. of your work, Diana, because we're blessed by you being on the planet and all the people that you're helping by doing this work. It's absolutely incredible. So lots of love to you. Uh, bless you too with your work as well. Thank you. Thank Wonderful. You. Have a great time. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye, bye, Rachel. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Just before you go, I wanted to tell you about my latest exciting project for 2024. We are going to be having a Sarah in Avalon retreat in Glastonbury, UK from the 18th to the 21st of April. I have been dreaming of doing a retreat with Sarah for so many years, but as some of you know, um, I live in Denmark and we have a son who has special needs, autism and ADHD, and that means I don't get to travel very much, if hardly at all, if I'm honest. So I've cleared my calendar next year so that I can go on this retreat. It might be the first, hopefully not the last, although Honestly, I can't see when I can do another one in the too near future. So if you can make it and you want to come, this is the one to come on. It's going to be very, very special. I don't want to have too many people on this retreat because I want to be able to give those of you who come the time and space to make it really, really special. Come over to my website, have a look on the events page. You can see some more details there and then there's a link you can download the whole PDF that tells you a lot more about it. Anyway, just wanted to share that exciting piece of news with you. Lots of love, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the interview. Bye for now.